Hi there, my name is Andrew Miller. I'm a visitor host here at the Museum of London and welcome to the third instalment of our London's Queer Objects video series. We are now downstairs in the galleries of modern London in our expanding city gallery and the object I want to look at here is this rather peculiar little sketch at the bottom of this cabinet called Ganymede and Jack Catch. It was published by Sodom and Onan in 1776. Uh, now here in the Expanding City Gallery, we're looking at what happened in the City of London after the Great Fire of London in 1666. And one of the major changes to London life was the introduction of the printing press, allowing publications like the one in which this sketch was included to circulate throughout the city much more rapidly. We see Ganymede, a tongue-in-cheek reference to a one Samuel Drybutter, a well-known shopkeeper in Pall Mall in the 1770s. Uh, and Ganymede is in cuffs at the mercy of the executioner, Jack Catch, who is relishing having at last caught that sweet, pretty creature. With Henry VIII's Buggery Act being now in place in London and Britain for over 200 years, uh, the politically sanctioned idea that relationships between two men were sinful and wrong had been well proliferated among uh, the people of London. And that had made life for characters like Samuel Drybutter very, very difficult. He would be in and out of the courts at Westminster uh, for different reasons throughout his life. It isn't until 1771 that he's actually brought into court to defend charges laid against him of sodomitic behaviour. Now these crimes were punishable by death under the Buggery Act of 1533. Samuel Drybutter uh, gets off with slightly different charges. Uh, he is exhibited in the pillory uh, for several days and when exhibited in the pillory he was essentially subjected uh, to the abuses of the public. People would have thrown apple cores, hazelnuts, basically their trash or their garbage at him. Uh, and this was kind of tantamount to publicly shaming him uh, for his private life and what we might consider today the same as kind of outing somebody and it was a kind of homophobic bullying that was taking place in the period. Dry Butter would be brought back to court and would regularly face uh, criminal charges and abuses from the public uh, for his private life throughout the 1770s and initially historians believed that he had actually uh, been executed in London uh, but what we have found out recently is that this depiction of uh, dry butter or Ganymede in stocks uh, is not historically accurate. Uh, evidence has revealed that he actually moved to Paris at some point, perhaps 1777, where he lived out the rest of his life. Uh, life in London had become essentially untenable uh, for someone of dry butter's sensibilities. Something quite interesting about this piece, however, is that Londoners of the time, or at least some Londoners, appear to be aware of some of the queer icons from history that we still know and discuss today. Uh, this slightly transparent reference to dry butter, Ganymede, comes from far back before London had even been founded in the Roman period. It actually comes from one of the old Greek myths. Uh, so who was Ganymede? Uh, Ganymede was uh, one of the lovers of Zeus, the god of Mount Olympus and the god of the gods, who had deemed Ganymede such a beautiful depiction of a man that he sent an eagle to collect Ganymede from the earth and bring him up to Mount Olympus where he would live immortally. Reference to the story of Ganymede is made by another queer object in our Roman gallery, uh, a jug handle salvaged from the ruins of Londinium, the original Roman city of London, uh, which depicts the eagle of Zeus carrying Ganymede up to Mount Olympus. Ganymede would serve as a cupbearer to the gods and become such a favourite of Zeus uh, that it would inspire cruel jealousy in Zeus's wife, Hera. And to commemorate uh, the young Ganymede, Zeus would paint a constellation of the water bearer in the sky, the constellation we now know as Aquarius. 
Thank you for joining me for another installment of the London's Queer Objects video series. If you would like to hear the full story of Samuel Drybutter and of Ganymede, do check us out on the website and sign up to one of our Museum of London Queer City tours. And do stay tuned for the rest of this video series, London's Queer Objects.